Today we're going to be making a Three Sisters soup over at Card. Uh, very happy to be here with Janine. And um, we're going to be working together to uh, make a traditional Indigenous recipe. So um, the reason that we're making this particular soup today is because um, there's a special relationship between the ingredients in the soup, the, the corn, the beans, the squash. The indigenous people knew a principle called companionate planting long before it was ever a popular term or method in westernized culture. Um, the corn grows, the, you know, at the beans trellis up it, uh, the squash protects, you know, the foliage from bugs and, and yeah, protects the, the plants. It's a healthy recipe, it's a comforting one too, so here we go. So we've got Janine working on the garlic over there, which is great. And then we're gonna peel our squash. So, sorry. <laughs> Another thing about um, about working with squash like this too is, you can save your seeds, and you can dry them and grow more. So, um, also for vegetable scraps, I always uh, I always save them in a bowl because you can make a stock like a base for soup out of the remainder. So, all right. And the peels on these are a little bit tough, so it's your choice. You can use a, a knife if you want, or some people prefer to use a vegetable peeler. I, uh, I like a knife myself. But uh, yeah, I was looking forward to coming here to do this. Uh, Card also has a Three Sisters garden. Um, that they planted in the parking lot here out back towards the train yard where it was growing like beautiful corn and beans and stuff. <laughs> I'm going to bring these over to you and um, and just, we can cube them. So with these guys, yeah, you can just, um, you know, just want them to be a roughly uniform size so they cook evenly. So just kind of something to that effect would be okay. great. As well, um, onion peels are, uh, are really great to save for the veg stock. They give it a good flavor, so. And when you're doing this, I always cut out the bottom of the onion because it'll give your soup a bitter flavor if you leave it in there. So, yeah. All right, just like that. The nice thing about this soup as well is uh, like if you're busy, you know, like say you're coming to card and you're working, but you have a family, then you can freeze it for I think up to about six months, it's still good for. We've got it on about almost the highest heat. Got it on about eight there. Um, olive oil is nice. Uh, canola oil works as well, but your body breaks down olive oil in a better way than canola, so I try to use that instead. So we'll wait for that to get hot, and then we can just put the, um, we'll get the onions in there, and then the rest of the ingredients. Add our bay leaves. I usually crack them just in half once because it releases the flavor. Now this is important. Always salt your onions. I know it's important also to not eat too much sodium, but if you don't salt your onions, then the natural sugars don't come out and they're not quite as tasty. I usually put the onions in before the garlic because the garlic will burn really quickly. So I'm gonna add our garlic in. It's minced up nice and small. Jin did a great job. I'm gonna come through with the squash. Those guys in there. It can turn your heat up a little bit once you've added the tomatoes, just so it simmers. And it's a cost-effective soup to make too. Like when you break it down, it's less than a dollar for like a good cup and a half serving per person. So you're just you're gonna put in about a cup and a half. 
Yeah, about a cup and a half of corn for that. I'm turning it up a little bit because it's frozen. That looks real good. And then the beans, awesome. It might need a little bit, a little bit longer to simmer, but um, but we'll see if it's we'll see if it's good enough to go. Oh, it does look good. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that squash needs a little bit more, but the rest is good to go. Mm -hmm. I think you rocked it. <laughs>